Welcome back to Spread Coder and we are back for our video. In today's video, we will learn about WebRTC and we will learn about what is WebRTC, its key features, pros and cons and why we need it and where we can use it and how does it work. Everything we will learn in this video. So let's start it. So what is WebRTC? So basically WebRTC is web real-time communication technology that allows web browser to stream audio, video, media as well as to extend useful data between the browser, mobile platforms and the IoT devices without requiring an intermediary such as a server. So WebRTC is a set of plugins free APIs which can be used in both desktop and the mobile browsers. It does not need any native app for audio video communication and it's allow peer-to-peer -peer communication on the web pages or the mobile application. Applications. WebRTC stimulates exchanging of data between the two different sources. So in today, it has become the most important tool for communication and the data sharing. So let's understand the key feature of that WebRTC. So basically WebRTC work on the three primary components to initiate a peer-to-peer -peer interaction effectively. First one is a media stream. We can also call it as a get user media. The function in which we use in our application and all and it will be used for access to and the control of the user camera and the microphones then we have peer connection and it has the primary objective of creating the direct communication without the aid of any intermediary connections then we have the data channels and it is basically peer-to-peer -peer data exchange so now let's understand the pros and cons of our webrtc so let's understand the pros first First one is a better sound quality. Basically WebRTC offer built-in support for echo cancellation and the noise reduction as well as the automatic microphone sensitivity adjustment also they provide. Because of this, it's make the WebRTC calls very clear and as compared to the other technologies which we use. And WebRTC also uses modern audio video codecs to deliver outstanding call qualities even on the slow connection also. Then we have open source technology. Open source code gets quickly evaluated and the quality controlled by the WebRTC community. But the open source has also lead to widespread adoption also. And then we have simplified development. Even though that WebRTC is based on that C++ architecture, but WebRTC has a built-in JavaScript API layer, which developer can use to quickly implement WebRTC solution with the relatively little code. Then we have secure and stable. So basically WebRTC is protected by few mandatory encryption specifications and this provide end-to-end -end encryption for any data sent through a WebRTC peer-to-peer -peer connections. Then we have requires no plugins. So most real-time communication technology required a plugin to make call using the browsers. These plugin must be installed on the end user, but with the help of this WebRTC, we don't require any such plugins. We can just use the simple JavaScript APIs and all. Now let's understand the cons also. So it is still under the development. So WebRTC is a new technology and that current version is working draft. That means that WebRTC source code could undergo significant changes in the future. Whether or not future version will be backward compatible with the previous version remain to be seen. And last one is that documentation is very fragmented for this WebRTC. So there is a one question arise in our mind. So do we really need WebRTC? So the answer for this is yes, we need WebRTC because most people have the browser that support WebRTC and the WebRTC work without any plugin or browser extension. From an end user perspective, WebRTC is just a click to play and it is the simplest possible end user experience. We don't need to install the much any plugins to make it work. We just need only browser or the mobile application to make it work. So let's see what are the use cases for the WebRTC. So we can use that WebRTC in our online education also. And we can use that WebRTC in our online education portal also. And there we can give the platform the availability. And there we can give that student and instructor to interact with each other in the real time or with the basis of that WebRTC and all. Then we can also use in our telemedicine softwares also. And there also we can give that uh, doctors and the patient think the features of that video calling and all. There also we can use it. Then we have our team communication collaboration solution. There also we can give 
if like if we are working in any team work or anything like we have the team instead of using any ready-made application like zoom meeting or microsoft team we can also create our own solution for that team handling and team communication and a collaboration solution with the help of that web rtc and also we can use that web rtc in our gaming and entertainment purposes also so now let's understand how does web rtc work so here you can see we have client a and client b and they want to communicate with each other for that we have to use something like signal server and a stun server and everything suppose client a want to connect to client b and client a first need to determine all the possible way that public can connect to it in the same way client b also need the, to determine how the public can connect to it client a and client b signal this session information sdp that we will discuss later on to each other with the help of that web socket and also they can use http also because that sending information does not matter how we are sending it then client a connect to client b via most optimal path that is ICE. that also we will discuss later on then a and b also exchange their supported media types and the security information after that an agreement will be made between the client a and client b and the connection will be open so now let's understand what all this information is like signal server as P stun server then we have our IC and all so basically WebRTC protocol is a collection of server technology that combine up to set one secure communication of the web and there are some steps involved to build up the framework and the first step is signaling then we have the connecting then we have the securing then we have our communication so our first step is signaling so it's referred to setting up and controlling a communication session the peers connecting to a real-time communication send their stream to the server with the server in quotes and delivered to the receiving peer so basically signaling protocols are a way to coordinate and control the communication between the peers it's user sdp that is session description protocol Protocol, which is in a plain text format and containing the list of media sections following information are shipped by the signaling the location of the peer which is the IP address of both the agents client A and client B and whatever the agents which we are connecting to each other then we have our consuming audio and video track that an agent comes across then we have the producing audio video track which agent transfer then we have the data channels that determine the media type with a resolution exchange then come our connecting. The connecting refer to securing a bi-directional communication between the two peers. In web RTC, communication happened to be in a P2P connection rather than in the client and server connection. We have IC interactive connectivity establishment. Basically, it is a framework for connecting peers such as two video chat clients. So it's ensure that the best possible connection between the two peers, even if the location of the two is difficult to connect. But for solving these difficulties, we have an efficient way and it's used two servers such as Stun and a Turn. Stun is basically session traversal utilities for the NAT and it is a standardized set of method and a network protocol which allow an end host to discover its public IP address if it is located behind the NAT. Then we have the Turn server that is traversal using relay around NAT and these server help us to establish a connection between the two agents when a direct connection between the two agents is not possible due to the firewall restrictions and turns create a temporary IP for the agent to generate traffic to and from acting as a proxy between the two clients. Then we have the next step which involves with the securing and web artists ensure the security and it's ensure that the communication shared between the two agents are encrypted and remain confidential with with any third party and we have two types of protocols used over there first one is a dtls that is datagram transport layer security and which allow web rtc to establish a secure and encrypted communication between the two peers client and the server to communicate need an agreement on certain values known as super in a dtls handshake and it's secure the data stream of the peers and dtls is required then we have SRTP that is secure real-time transport protocol and it ensure and encrypt the media stream between the two connecting peers and it initialized by using the key generated by the DTLS and this protocol is specifically designed for encrypting the RTP package and the next one and the last one is that is communication and basically WebRTC is developed for transferring data audio and video over the web and this 
technology allow sharing of unlimited data over the web it's allow a user to make activities such as adding or removing the stream anytime over a call and this stream could be bundled together with two core protocol of webrtc communication and we have two types of protocol over there first one is the rtc that stand for real time transfer protocol and this protocol is designed to carry real time delivery of the video and it's give the agent stream which can be run over the multiple media feeds from one connection and this protocol does not ensure the media transfer cover latency and the reliability but it's provided tool to implement them then we have rtcp that is a real time control protocol and it's allow administrator to monitor the quality of the calls from the collected metadata and this protocol allow an agent to add any metadata they want to communicate the statistic of the calls this protocol also track the packet loss latency and the other vip concern so if there is any connection issue there is any video delivery issue anything like that that can also be track over there so these all the step which involve in the webrtc for having connection everything so in this video we will just cover the webrtc basic information to understand what is webrtc and its features its pros and cons and how does it work and where we can use it so in the next video we will create one small application which will be that communication application with the multiple users like a meeting application there we will actually use that our webrtc in the real time with our mobile application and the node.js server as a signaling server so that's all in this video i hope you like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel like comment share i will come back soon with another awesome video thank you for watching the video